everyone! Welcome to this new tutorial! Have you also seen all these cool photos with this motion blur effect on Instagram lately? I did and I'm going to show you today how you can recreate this in post-production in Photoshop. So I'd say let's just get started. So as you can see we are here right now in Photoshop and this is actually the photo we are going to recreate with this motion blur effect I just mentioned. I already have here two photos open. You can see they look quite similar. There's only like a little difference in the, in the position of the model. And so the first thing I'm gonna do is actually go to one of these images, click on it, hold it, and then just like draw, uh, drag it and drop it to the other photo. So you can see here now, the photo is now copied to the other photo. You can see here we have a new layer. And yeah, so what I am going to do next is see that these two, the model, is more or less in the same position and in the same size. To do so, I will first reduce the opacity to so that I see both photos. And as you can see here, um, the second photo, the second layer, that I just placed is a little bit bigger. So what I'm going to do now is transform it and make it a tiny bit smaller. Now they nicely overlay and position it like here. Next, what we're going to do is actually setting it to full opacity. Next, we're going to add an inverted layer mask to the photo. I'm doing this on my Windows computer by pressing Alt and um, the symbol down here. And then I have an inverted layer mask, which means that the photo actually disappears. So next, what I'm going to do is select the layer mask, take the brush tool. And make sure that I paint with white, that my white color is in the foreground. And then I will add 100% opacity zoom in a bit and then I will draw in the face of the model again. It's mainly going to be the face and my opacity is at 100. So now I want to like make this over here look better, the overlay. So I'm going to reduce the opacity a bit and change the foreground color over here to black, which means that I am again Moving some of the some of the photo. Next, I'm gonna duplicate the second photo with the layer mask, and then I go to filter, blur, and add a motion blur filter to it. Okay. So, as you can see, one head is further up and the other one is further down. So, what I want is like a motion blur that goes from top down, more or less. So, this is from left to right, I'd say. But we want another angle. So, I'm going to change it here. And you can see, that looks more like the real movement. I'm also going to change the distance a bit. Make it a bit smaller, more like this. And then I press OK. What I want to do next is actually blending more of this motion blur in. To do so, I go to the right again to the layers panel and select the layer mask. This is important because now you see my colors are back to black um, and white before it was the color I selected previously. So now with like the white color in the front, and then opacity is set to a bit lower, um, let's say 20. I'm going to paint in more motion blur. Just whatever I think it might look good to like have some blur. That can be, for example, the shoulder because there you will have some movement. I also want to blend out of here the neck a bit. Let's add some more here. And then what I have to do next is zoom into the face. Make the size of my brush a bit smaller. Draw here as well. And then 
I want to see his face better. With the motion blur layer disabled, you can see that the face is kind of clear, sharp. If I enable it again, it's overlaid with the whole motion blur. So I want to reduce that. I take the black color in front and again with maybe a bit more opacity to be honest. Say 40, 41, 45. I'll draw here again and get back the face details, the, the layer below. I want it to bl be blended in again. Okay, now uh, you can see that where in the areas where I blended in the motion blur effect in the face, it got darker and I don't want that. So what I'm going to do next is add a new curve, make it a bit brighter, and again invert it by pressing um, CTRL and I. And now with less opacity again, I'll draw in some brightness. I try to also follow here the movement from up to down just as the motion was and as the motion blur goes to make it look a bit more realistic. I then go ahead and take the same layer that I used to brighten up uh, the parts in the face that I wanted to be brighter to like also brighten up other parts in the photo that I think would make sense and would look good if they were a bit brighter. Um, and after having played around a bit, this is my final result. Tag me on your edits on Instagram and I'd be happy to reshare some of your edits.